Good afternoon, everyone. It's not been on the mainstream news, but it has snowed in July on six of the seven continents on our Earth. In the United States, three different states, eight degrees north latitude in Venezuela, as well as an enormous part of southern South America, second once in a hundred year storm to hit Australia in a month. They're getting snow where it just doesn't snow. European Alps, snow, middle of July. Notice who has the hottest temperatures on the La Nina forecast, both Australia and the U.S. weather bureaus. Indian Ocean cooling, Pacific Ocean cooling, Atlantic Ocean cooling, and the sunspots are dropping off to nothing, which leads into the cooling for the rest of the month of July globally. Residents of Patagonia to wear more coats in their houses to save energy because it's so cold because they just raised their gas price by 25 times. What's definitely not being talked about on the international news, snow in July in six of the seven continents across our planet. The United States, Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, eight degrees north latitude in Venezuela, as well as record snows all across the southern part of South America. The second 100-year storm to strike Australia in a month, dropping snow where it doesn't snow. Apparently, it snowed down on the beaches. Thousands of homes without power, hundreds of thousands of trees down, snow in the Alps as well, termed chaos summer with flash floods and snow in July. If we take a look, at all the oceans, the Indian Ocean cooling, Pacific Ocean's cooling, Atlantic Ocean's cooling, and the sunspots are literally dropping off a cliff. And you can see why the global temperatures are following this for the next couple of weeks. The drop off in sunspots is occurring three years faster than forecast. It's upticked for a few sunspots in this next week or so. But once it goes back down to that negative again, we are literally at zero and welcome to the new grand solar minimum. Bureau of Meteorology in Australia and NOAA in the United States showing warm temperatures for La Nina. I don't see any political agenda in that at all. With the latest June temperatures dropping off the second most ever recorded in the satellite era, it brings us down to about 0.3. Now, if we run these temperatures out here, forecast of all the 90 climate models from the IPCC, zero are correct zero. How could we possibly even have another climate treaty when they have a 0% strike rate? 0% correct. And let them dictate our policies and destroy our economy. And this is the same crew that's telling you it's been the warmest April ever, but the temperatures are showing something different. The temperatures decrease through May as well. And June temperatures are down. They're also calling for a mild La Nina. But as you can see through history, when there's a spike in the El Nino, it's followed by an extreme drop off. I really think it's going to be an epic Nina following the decrease in the sunspot count. And I think it's going to get colder than anybody anticipated. That's why I'm saying we'll have to go out and shovel 25 more inches of global warming off the driveway all this winter. Atlantic Ocean temperatures down. And that regulates the northern hemisphere, so you can expect northern hemisphere temperatures down during this winter as well. Indian Ocean, cooler, and I like how they say it's in favor of a weak La Nina. Looking at the August forecast for La Nina, Australia up near the heat again. What is this political agenda they have going on? I tell you it keeps warming. President Macri in Argentina asked the citizens in Patagonia to wear more coats in their house. Their interior minister said it was a mistake to raise their natural gas prices by 25 times. Yet McCree comes out and says, be a responsible citizen. Don't consume as much energy. Use the least amount of energy as possible. Continuing with the insanity, jump over to Weather Modification Association's news feeds for 2016. They're actually talking about cloud seeding to prevent cooling by moving warm air into pockets where it's cold. Now that is sheer insanity. Absolutely insane. Now for a dose of good humor, Mark Stein, 
You're going to laugh at least six to eight times while you watch this. He's being sued by Michael Mann over a statement he made that he disagreed with the hockey shtick. Climate change, the facts. Also, been scolded by a couple of readers and even directed by one who called me a denier and said I need to educate myself by going to this link that he sent here, Skeptical Science, that I needed to, as a newcomer, immerse myself in the real facts of global warming. Because apparently I'm not getting the big picture that I'm trying to dissuade you and, and make you double think the global warming that's going on. And I'm a bad guy for trying to make you think independently and presenting facts showing that the sun drives our climate. 